Professor, we welcome you to speak to the Lord's people. Thank you very much, my brother. Uh, I greet you all in the name of Jesus Christ. And I want to thank my brother, Bishop Sheridan, for giving me the opportunity to share in this place. Uh, my names, you've heard them, Reverend Florence Isabi Muranga. I um, retired. I tend to make a, a priest, but I'm not tired. And by God's grace, I'm serving in the government in the agricultural sector to bring mark, uh, markets closer to farmers in the banana cropping sector. We have uh, our first factory in Rusheng at Nyaruzinga. And uh, we have a secretariat in Kampala. Uh, this is uh, uh, the month in uh, our industry when we thank God because we are that it's a month in which the company was commissioned. So I took the liberty to share with you our theme of Thanksgiving, which is from Luke chapter 17, 11 to 19, and which we've been sharing on over the years. And God, gracious, have been opening up new avenues of understanding in this context. One, I, I therefore called my theme today, recognizing Christ as your high priest as the key gist of my sharing today. Yeah, when we look at that passage, what comes to fore is the lepers and 10 lepers. Those of you who know a bit about the traditionals of the Jews with leprosy, it is actually phenomenal that you could have 10 lepers approach anybody. And that really also spoke into their faith because they could have been turned off at any point. At any rate, I will not go into that emphasis. Uh, the issue is that they must have found their way and come as close as possible to the Lord to be able to cry to him, to say, Master, have mercy. And... Uh, the other interesting aspect is that the master spoke to them. He didn't say, come out and pron he pronounced them healed. He didn't come out and waved his hand. He, he just said, go. Yeah. He, and uh, Jesus Christ was often very candid in the way he conducted himself in this trilateral zone where he was likely to be accused of breaking the rules. So nobody would say he touched the lepers. You get it. But he, he said, go. Go and show yourself the high priest. And those who knew the rules is that once you got well, you had to go well from leprosy or anything that looked like leprosy. You had to go and show yourself the high priest. The issue is that these lepers nothing happened immediately. And we know that nothing happened immediately by the action of the leper who was a foreigner. So as they went, something miraculous happened. They must have all got well. Then this man, instead of going to the high priest, he came back. And that's where the message really for today I thought would focus yes I want us to think that we're all lepers leprosy not of that kind that we know in the bible 
but we have leprosy in terms of problems, in burdens, challenges, sicknesses, and other needs that cause all kinds of worries. We have these issues in packages of leprosy with which we come to the Lord every day or regularly. Some of us have indeed leprosy of our families, a husband who is a drunkard, a wife who is unfaithful, children who are incredible. You know, all this becomes leprous around us and we go with this to the Lord every day. The issue is what we expect. We accept change, we accept healing, we accept a new chapter in our lives. But many times we don't see anything immediately. We don't see anything happening immediately. And many of us, we don't hear that go. We remain glued at that point of intercession. We go to the mountains, we go from one church to another, we go from one pastor to another to get our healing, to get our intervention, to get our release. You know, the issues even like getting a job, you find somebody is going from one church to another, getting anointing to get breakthrough. This is a way we manage our leprosy. The question is, do we hear his word? Do we hear his command telling us go and show yourself to the high priest? Because our Lord is the same yesterday, today, and forever. His word is the same. His testimony is the same. Just like these lepers came and he sent the command to them, he sends a command to us. And his command is in his word. What does his word tell us about the challenges we have in life? I have a few references here in uh, Matthew, no, Ma Mark, verse 24. Um, yeah, Jesus say that whatever we ask in prayer, believe that you have received it and will be yours. In John 14, 13, he says, whatever you ask in my name, I will do whatever the Father, I will do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. John 14, 14, if you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. Matthew 18, verse 18 to 19. I will read verse 19. If two of you agree on anything they ask, it will be done for them by the Father. This testimony, testament, of the word of God. I call it the church of Christ that he has told us on what to do when we ask. Yes, many times, many of us are distraught because we feel that he's not responding. And he's not responding. We don't feel that he's responding because we have a fallback position. When the, Jesus Christ told these lepers, to go to the high priest and they were not healed. Yeah? He really wanted to see where was their faith. Did they realize actually he was a high priest? 
Jesus Christ is actually our high priest. But it's only the foreigner, the Samaritan, who didn't have a high priest, who when he got were recognized that actually the person to report to is Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ, a high priest, has already pronounced healing on you. So that means that when the high priest has pronounced his word, it is true what he has said is binding. So why did the nine not come back? Because they were glued on a high priest. The high priest was the greater reference to them than Jesus Christ. And many of us, our prayers keep on bouncing, keep on perpetuated. We keep on in this polygamy of going around seeking for solutions, you know, from because we have what I would say, we, we have hospitals, of course. These are also like high priests. We have uh, these churches of different people with different kind of authority. They also become high priests. We have uh, we have financial resources that we fall back on because you can pay this person, you can pay the other one, you can pay a doctor here, you can. And some people even go back to the traditional uh, uh, practices when they are sick because they have the resources to do what to pay into all those kind of systems. We have high priests also. Of our knowledge, some of our rationality, our understanding becomes a greatest impediment to understand and rationalize the word of God as coming from the high priest. So really, what I wanted to share with you is that we need to go back to the principles of understanding that either the word of God is not true or it's real. You get it. That's why some people call it the white man's uh, jargon or whatever. Because actually, there is authority in the word of God that the spoken word is just like the written word that we can take to the faith position. So as uh, I wind up, I want to emphasize these facts that the revelation that we all need to, to have is that we have one high priest and that high priest is Jesus Christ. He has pronounced himself on our authority through his word. Our authority is he tells us to ask he tells us not to beg. He tells us to ask in his name. And he's waiting to be glorified in the things that he gives us, in the intervention that he gives us, in the breakthrough that he gives us. We are failing that position because we are seeking our own high priest. We are using our own solutions to try to go over the problems that meet us in day to day as Christians. It is a shame that even in the church, on financial crises, we have compromised. Instead of going before the Lord and seeking his will and believing that we can ask and receive and get his extension, we have gone to high priests who cannot give us the federal breakthroughs that require. We have gone to the high priest who have given us solutions that are compromising the church. We know that many people, even in the church mainstream, both here and, and external, have are actually responsible for the fire that has gone into the, the, the LGTB because of the money, the money that has gone through this whole system. 
that for a time it was very difficult for people to say no and say the Lord whom we serve is able to provide. The Lord whom we, we, we wait on has given us authority to ask and is able to bless the works of our hands, is able to bless our going forward. And I want to say this is our experience at my workplace. We set up an altar and we, it was very difficult when we started, people were telling us we were very stupid to think that you can set up an industry using government resources. Because if you don't pay into the government coffers for those who are the bureaucrats, you'll never be able to get any money. I got this kind of advice, both from Christians and non-Christians in the mainstream. And we said, we are going to trust the Lord. We set up an altar, not to pray and, 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 and not to work, we would pray, certainly, but we said every year, we are going to stand and say, thank you, Lord, for the fire you've mm -hmm. brought us. And we are going to look at you as our high priest, as our provider. And I want to testify that what we've done in Yaruzinga is not man, it is God's provision. Because sometimes even how he has come to tell his excellency on our requirement and our needs has been very, very miraculous. I remember one time when we had got no money at all in the budget for that year. And we happened to start stop on the road on the way from Kampala with somebody whom I was showing around who was a visitor. And she was asking me, what are you going to do next? And I said, I don't know. But I trust the Lord that if he sent me to do this job, you find a solution. And no sooner had I said that, the president and his strength stopped there. And it was Mrs. Seven who saw me. And the first question he asked me, did you get money? And I said, no. And the tables were turned. So we've seen this happen so many times. And I have told people, it is we the Christians, because many of us who are in the mainstream of government are Christians who are fueling the, the, the cancer of corruption because we fear, because we look at the other priests. We do not look at Christ as our high priest who has commissioned us in the mainstream. If we have Christ in our hearts, if we accept Jesus Christ and know him as our high priest, it is possible to walk our walk in life and do our mission in life and have the victories that will bring glory to him because he's a high priest and his word is binding. When he speak, he does not repent. This is my charge to you. That is my advocation that yes, this country is going to change, not because of anybody else, but all of us, when we believe as Christians to know that it depends on me to do the binding of Christ. And that on Christ, what he has spoken, when he says, what you pray, if you believe, it can be done for you. He didn't lie. It is true. Yes, you, many of us have put it to the test. If you believe Christ for what he is, he's able to bring to pass that which you believe, because the authority is in your statement. It's amazing that when you read most of these texts, which tell you about asking, he's asking so that God may have the glory. It's only condition that when you do whatever you do and you do it well, God may have the glory. That's why the, the man who came back and brought glory to God was given a little portion of his healing. I charge you, brethren, seek the high priest to be your guiding principle and take his word as gospel truth in whatever situations that you are facing. And when it's all done, the, the key word is that if you believe, 
And if you believe, that means you take, when he's, if when he has deployed you, you, you he say, go, you go. When he say, act, you act, you get it. You don't say, I will wait until the waters are over. You cannot now say if you, are, you have a project you are supposed to work on in church. Don't say, let's see what the World Bank will say before I start. If the Lord has charged you, that's the moment. That is the moment that will give him praise because he's able to realize that which has commissioned you. I thank you very much for listening to me. May God bless you. And thank the Lord so much for using her for that great work especially ministering to us through God's work, reminding us that Jesus is the high priest, reminding us that we should fix our eyes on him because it is in him that we can get fulfillment. Yes. 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 Yes.